Hey everyone, this is Chris, and you're listening to One Cross Radio. And first and foremost, I want to wish y'all a very happy new year. Hope you had an amazing Christmas and a great new year. Um, Hope you had some awesome time to be surrounded by family, loved ones, um, and really enjoy enjoy the time off. One of the things I love about Christmas and New Year's is... uh, even though some you, you can cynically make the argument that it's a lot of people just acting and it's phony, um, I tend to disagree. What I love about this time of year is everybody actually tries to be nicer, um, and it's and it's an enjoyment. And my hope and prayer is that people actually learn from acting nicer, <laughs> um, myself included, during this time, and that it's something that sticks across the year. And I also hope and pray that those who don't know Jesus really get the chance to come to know him. Um, as Becky pointed out in the uh, the podcast we did before we took the Christmas break, that there seems to be a lot more openness to actually hearing about Jesus. Um, so I do hope and pray that uh, people took that chance and that, um, that the Lord won them. Uh, before we dive into today's episode, I want to uh, again plug that uh, the wonderful Trisha McNeil, um, who was on our first episode of 2018 um, with uh, with her, with uh, Paul um, when I was interviewing them as Songbird and Strings? She uh, in late November dropped her first single, which I got to tell tell you everybody, it was on my repeat the second I found it. Um, Trisha is a very, very talented singer. I've known her for years, um, and we've had fun talking about writing, writing music, um, and just creativity. And she's such a great person, uh, sister in Christ, an incredibly talented individual. Um, And when I heard the single, I was just beaming. I'm so thrilled uh, for my friend to have this. Um, All of this is to say, you should really check out her single. You can find it on Spotify. Uh, it's the song is called June and under the artist name uh, it is in earnest I'm gonna quickly double check that because uh, I'm 99% that there is another in earnest but just to make sure um, the song yeah the song you'll be looking for is called June single by in earnest look that up you will not regret it and I can't wait for more music from Trish All right, so now we're going to dive into today's episode, um, which is something I've been wanting to do for a while, uh, and it's something I will do again. Um, It's actually something I really want to do with other other people. I feel like that would make it so much more enjoyable and so much more fun. Um, But it's it's also something I'm uh, I, I. I can do every once in a while. Um, interestingly, I've had some conversations with friends, uh, some really dear friends lately, where part of the reason I love the podcast, um, and I've shared over the past year or so, uh, and even in a post I wrote on the blog, um, on the website in November, that um, for whatever reason, as the anxiety and the depression have been on and off kicking the crap out of me this past year, um, sometimes just talking, talking about it or other stuff gets me out of my head, um, gets me out of my head, gets me out of those negative zones and it's really good. And today is an exercise in that, um, heck, some of the solo podcasts looking at you rant about Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, although I stand by it, um, <laughs> stand by it, Becky. Um, it's, uh, it's been an exercise in that and that's what today is, um, so today I am doing a watch along. Um, I know I, I promised the, the deep dive, another deep dive coming soon. It will be coming. I will do the Godzilla deep dive. I promise you. Um, it's just, let's be real. 30, 33 to 35 some odd movies. Um, that's a lot of deep diving material. And as much as I love Godzilla, I'm not going to sit through and watch every single one of these movies, especially the anime ones. I've tried. They're di- it, it, to me, they're a disappointment. Hopefully other ones will be better. Um, but that deep dive 
will be coming. Um, with the deep dive with Power Rangers, it's not like I watched all that because that's even more to watch. But because there's so much uh, material in Godzilla to go over, I need a refresher on a number of the movies, especially from the the Showa period. Um, so that is coming at some point. I, I will have that sometime sooner than later. Uh, so that that's my answer to that. Uh, but today we are going to do a watch along uh, with a wonderful, un, uh, not unknown, but um, I just can't think of the word. Uh, I want to say underrepped, uh, but that's not correct, and I don't think it's a term. Um, it's a lesser known uh, Disney film from the 90s, but its audience loves it, and it loves it because it's outstanding. And I am talking about a Goofy movie. Uh, a Goofy movie came out during Disney's outstanding Renaissance period, but it's not really grouped in with the Renaissance, um, which I, I understand why. But at the same point, it's kind of like, no, no, it's so good. It's it's of that quality. And to me, it's even better than a number of the films that are officially included in the Renaissance period. Um, a Goofy movie is... A loose continuation of the show Goof Troop. Um, it's it's a quasi spinoff of it, but a, it acknowledges the stuff. It's got characters from it, but I th I've read some articles from fans and everything where it's like, well, here's these huge differences. Um, Goof Troop is something I will be revisiting because thank you, Disney+. Plus. Um, Disney Plus, you got The Mandalorian. I'm not going to shill it. Um, to me, it's worth the the not expensive fare for it. Um, I enjoy it, especially The Mandalorian, which at some point, uh, once that show's done, I'm going to do a review of The Mandalorian. Um, which, now that I'm saying that, I hope it's not done before this episode's out. Or, if it is, it's coming. Alright, so, give me a quick sec, and then we're going to get started. All right, and we are good to go. Sorry about that, listener. Um, I was getting uh, a Goofy movie geared up for on Disney+. Plus Again, not, not a plug um, or a sponsor. Although, Disney, I know y'all got deep, deep, deep pockets. <laughs> um, if you'd like to sponsor, I'm in. Um, <laughs> uh, let's work something out. Uh, anyways, <laughs> um, I, w uh, what I found with a number of watch alongs, the, uh, the Godzilla podcast does this, uh, reviews movies in a watch along format as well. Um, they'll tell you exactly where they are on the DVD. Um, I do own the DVD, but the laptop I'm using right now to watch it does not have a DVD drive, uh, cause many laptops now don't have DVD drives. I miss the simplicity. Um, so I am all, it's currently at zero 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 on Disney Plus. So on the off chance you want to you want to watch along with me and hear my thoughts, uh, here we go. Oh man, I miss. Uh, I know they still do this intro, but I I've got so many childhood memories of this little uh, cue with the Walt Disney Pictures. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Um, from my from my childhood and i love watching the uh the dvd of this just because on classic disney dvds uh <laughs> the dramatic music and then goofy going oh that terrible impression um sorry Luna's just begging for attention um i love the dvds just because you get ads for now on video and cassette or now on video cassette and dvd and, oh man, it just reminds me of a simpler time. Uh, <laughs> so the laptop just had um, had lag, so I was hearing uh, Roxanne calling for Max, but just this open uh, wheat field. Max is a teenage boy in this. Um, it's so interesting, the designs of this movie, just because everybody's... With Goofy, like, you know, Goofy and Max are clearly dogs. Um, everything's an animal, but to an extent, a number of them look a lot more human-like 
Um, <laughs> she's just floated down to him. Uh, it's clearly this girl he's uh, got a huge crush on and in love with. Um, I haven't watched an extremely goofy movie, the sequel to it yet. <laughs> so I'll get on that train of thought. Um, she was about to lean in to kiss him. Suddenly all the wheat and grass turned to thorns. And it's a horror nightmare sequence. And Max is turning into Goofy. Um, it's a great take on classic monster movies. Um, he's just transformed the dramatic music, the huge scream. <laughs> Max's Goofy just went yuck. Um, yeah, I never watched an extremely Goofy movie. But a big point... It, it's on Disney+, Plus, so I was like, I'm going to watch it maybe, but... A big point on against it is uh, Roxanne is gone, and it's the huge crux of this movie. Um, so Max just woke up. For some reason, he's wearing tidy whities It's again a Disney, um, a Disney trope. Donald Duck can't can walk around in a shirt with no pants, and it not be a problem. But when he gets out of the uh, the shower or something, he's got to be wearing a towel. So Goofy's just um, burst into Max's room. Um, it's a stereotypical teenage boy room. There's a random World War II plane, um, and a lot of stuff for Powerline, who in this movie is a character, um, that is supposed to be a mix of Michael Jackson and Prince, which would be an incredibly talented individual. Um, give me a sec. I'm just going to have some of my smoothie here. Goofy's vacuum is vacuuming up all Max's clothes. I have no idea if Max is going to get, um, if Max is going to get those clothes back or they're gone. He just said that Powerline is the biggest, uh, rock star on the planet. And then Goofy's going into about a Mambo King, which I think any teen has had that conversation with, with a parent or a, a relative who's like, Nope, someone from this generation is, is much bigger and Whoever you are, uh, whoever you're a fan of is small time compared. And we're going into our first song. Um, this is so good. That That's the thing. Um, so many songs in this movie are are memorable. It's so much smaller than so many of the the Disney other Disney movies of the era. Uh, this is a smaller, more personal story. And you don't get anybody's father dying. Um a bunch of kids are flinging jock straps at him. It's really weird. Um, and now we got two dog people because of the button nose, but look a lot like teenagers, uh, like regular teenagers. <laughs> uh, everybody's dancing and singing after today because it's the last day before summer. Um, we're going through like nineties teenage stereotypes, twins dating twins. Um, Really, really geeky kids being into comics, like, with braces and acne and Star Trek uniforms as shirts. Stereotype doesn't hold up anymore. Uh, <laughs> we're in front of a record store. Oh, man, I miss HMV. I don't know if it's still in America, but it's gone from Canada. Um, everybody's freaking out about Powerline. And now everybody's on a bus cheering because uh, it's a bus. And cheerleaders, except the two goth girls who are like, hey, we don't have to ditch at pep rallies. A very grotesque um, bus driver. <laughs> and then the, the jerkiest, the jerkiest principal who's like, I'm going to suspend you on the last day. Um, everybody's singing. Sorry if this isn't the most engaging podcast. I, I've never done this before. Um... And it's different not having somebody to riff off of. Uh, but everybody's singing. <laughs> You're getting visual representations of kids that are clearly like the druggy kids. But of course, because it's a G-rated Disney movie in the 90s, you're not going to see any of that. And you shouldn't. But you got all your high school stereotypes. The jocks, the goths, the cool kids, the, the outsiders, which is Max, who's now meeting Roxanne actually for the first time. And failing the talk. Oh, he just yucked. And he's super embarrassed and running away. Which is something I think anybody who you know has grown up and gone through puberty. And 
gone through high school and had crushes on people can relate to. You freeze up and you just make a, a total uh, fool out of yourself. Um, on a side note, it's going to be difficult for me not to say a goof of yourself while watching this movie. But in a dark way, I learned over the last year that you, you can't call somebody a goof anymore uh in in terms of uh through street culture and prison culture um if you're being called a goof you're being called a pedophile it's a serious it's a serious thing um okay i gotta look up this guy's name the kid who the guy who's like um mm, slurpage um he oh man um Shoot, yeah, no, I'm stalling. It's just because the the casting, when you hear him, you know who it is. But it's, uh... Okay, let's see. Uh, just give me the cast, you monsters. Um, Oh, yeah. So Pauly Shore plays this guy, Bobby, who's super into, uh... Who's super into all the, uh... The friggin' audio-visual vid- stuff. <laughs> One of the one of the Star Trek kids, as uh, the head of student body, is up on stage. Is like, "Yo, Stacy, talk to me, talk to me." <laughs> uh, and the principal's coming out. Crickets. Nobody likes this guy. Um, <laughs> again, stereotypes of the '90s. Um, yeah, so Pauly Shore was someone huge in the 90s um in the age group just about mine and people around my age but i was never a particular fan um the kids instantaneously just fell asleep because he's like hey you should all do uh you should all do summer school and science slumber parties uh so max is getting dressed up as <laughs> bobby has a blowtorch for some reason um oh pete yeah pete um is it pete no pete's uh pete's his dad um junior is it junior um sorry it's uh let me look up i gotta look up this character's name uh dang it oh we're launching into the power line moment where Max is basically doing uh, cosplay and lip sync, and they just dropped the principal through a uh, a grate. Um, he dropped, never to be seen again. Well, for five minutes. Surprising he didn't break his ans- break his ankle. So it's all digital effects. Everybody's freaking out. Um, Roxanne is finding this super attractive. <laughs> oh, he's tripped through the screen. That's going to cost a bit of money. That's going to set the school back. Everybody's cheering. I think it's just because they're like, this is so awesome. Wow, on the poster, Max looks a lot darker than he actually does in the movie. Oh, Roxanne's blushing and crushing. Um, Jason Marsden voiced Max. Oh, my goodness. Um... He's done a lot of voice work. Oh, PJ is his buddy's name. Uh, they're hooking him up. There's a lot of smoke coming out of the back. Uh, and now they're on a rope pulling him up around the entire auditorium. I have no idea how they rigged this. <laughs> Who's that guy? Uh, Max just scored a slam dunk. That would have done the um, Harlem Globetrotters proud. Oh, audio's going down principal's back uninjured it's the goof boy um again (laughs) Polly Shore is just like the surfer dude in this um and now we're at the title character of Goofy and trying to get this uh terrified child to smile he's just in a photo studio in what is a Walmart but not really oh he was squeaking a duck and just accidentally inhaled the squeaker and the baby smiling, but Goofy just rolls with it because he's such a good dude. Overbearing, but such a good dude. Oh, here comes Pete. His boss 
<laughs> um, yeah, I'm running out of tidbits. So, <laughs> you're seeing here how good Goofy is with kids. Um, it's it's really sweet. It's really cute. Um, he accidentally did the Wu-Tang hand symbol. Um, or he didn't, but I'm choosing to believe that Goofy's a fan of Wu-Tang. Um, and now Pete is like, let me show you how everything's done. And he's not as engaging. He's trying to be. And the kid's going to kick him in the shin. Yep, she kicks him right in the knee, but it doesn't connect. And now she's running all over the place. Uh, the mother looks exhausted with this uh, insane, insanely energetic child. <laughs> Goofy thinks Pete's good with kids. Um, he's holding this kid away by the shirt as he's like, I love them and they love me. And the kid's trying to swing at him. Uh, he's getting a... Uh, like a sticky pad to put on the kid's butt <laughs> that velcros them into place and the kid can't get up and Goofy's giving him a ba a, her a Bambi um <laughs> um sorry about that uh, Matt, uh Pete is lecturing Goofy about um if, if something's wrong, if a kid doesn't want to spend time with his parents, soon he's running around and stealing stuff and causing riots. And as he says this, when he says stealing stuff, he grabs the uh, the Bambi from the child. And then when he says causing riots, the kid has a meltdown like, Wah! Gibby, 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 Wah! Just, it's a really good gag. Um... PJ's coming out looking terrified because uh, his dad's so over overbearing, and then the principal's coming in, um, Bobby, and he's getting a uh, Max to guard his cheese whiz, um, his cheese whiz <laughs> can. It's pretty gross. Think spray paint, but coming out of a it's coming out of a spray paint can. It's it's gross because uh, when he's like, you got the stuff in a brown bag so it's almost like it's it's a either a play on or a reference to drugs like you can make the argument the guy's playing the character like he would be into drugs um oh max is see uh sorry uh roxanne's friend the student present it president is trying to get him to um uh get her to talk to him it's it's really cute um Everybody in this movie does such a great job. And I find what, like, so many of the Disney outputs in the 90s, like, you can revisit them. Uh, on Disney Plus, there's a great documentary um, called Waking Sleeping Beauty. Um, and eventually, I'd love to go have an actual honest and truthful docu Disney documentary where Disney wouldn't fight it. But they very much want to and try to protect their public image which is understandable but there's been a lot of questionable and shady stuff and when there's been um and that's over years um i'd love to see a documentary based on that um or with some of that stuff where they acknowledge and own up to their mistakes but um where was i going with this oh yeah um oh they just they've just made a date and it's super cute. It's so awkward. It's adorable. Um, <laughs> Max is trying to play play cool. And now uh, Roxanne is uh, stumbling and walking out of the back door all cutely embarrassed. And now Max is doing a, a joyous dance. Um, anyways, like in the 90s, you had the main Renaissance movies. And then Disney had a bunch of their direct-to-video uh, direct video uh, um, movies which were like the Aladdin sequels um, freaking Lion King 2 which is still good and in my opinion holds up um, like Belle's Magical Christmas which is now Beauty and the Beast's Magical Christmas um, the Little Mermaid sequels and prequels and all that jazz um, but some only some of them hold up and some of them are a lot more decidedly kiddie like in no way is this not a kids movie but it's such an accessible and good story that I think it it holds up for adults, and that's why you can watch it. You can watch it a lot more um, 
I'm not saying than any of the other movies because freaking Lion King has adult themes and Aladdin does and all that. But there's not a lot of stuff where I'd be like, this is clearly childish. Like, um, there's certain times when you're watching movies where you're like, this is farts and this is all kids stuff, but this is very accessible, multi-generational humor. And then it, it's got a story that you can relate to. Everybody can relate to having a well-meaning, but at times accidentally overbearing parent. Ma, I know you're listening. I am not talking about you. <laughs> Just so we're clear. Um, but it's something universal that everybody can relate to. Um, like, it's uh, that those moments where you're, like, wanting to approach that person you like. And it's awkward as anything. That happened with, uh, uh, I'll be honest, it was I was super awkward uh, when I approached Jill. <laughs> And I wasn't as young as Max was here. I was in my 20s, man. Um, sorry. I just, uh, that uh, banana strawberry smoothie is really good. Um, so Goofy got the phone call from school and his automatic thing was, um, like, is is Max hurt? Uh, which shows, like, just how much faith and love he has in this kid. But the principal, being ridiculous as he is, is like, he's gonna... Like, he'll end up, he's, no, he's in trouble. And if you don't get him on the right path, he'll end up in the electric chair. So it sends Goofy into a spiral. Um, and he's like, I'm going to take my son fishing and I'm going to write him. Make him everything okay. Um, which leads to the big conflict of the movie. So Max is now leaving school and everybody's like, Max, you're awesome. Like, that was a great concert. Uh, PJ, being the amazing supportive friend, has gotten everybody cheering Max's name now. So now you're getting the even happier reprise of after today um and it's power line in the oh it's oh wait no 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 sorry it's not a reprise of after today it's a reprise of a uh, stand out the power line song power line was voiced by uh i think tevin campbell if i'm getting his name right and some of this seems to be a direct homage to um uh, ferris bueller's day off because he went through the backyard he didn't go as like, oh, smells good or anything, but just some of that. He's now taking somebody's skateboard accidentally, skateboarding through construction sites, saved a child who was about to pull. <laughs> a baby was putting a fo- about to put a fork in a socket. They thought of this. They animated it. <laughs> um, they uh. They they kept doing that, and then he he's now home talking to Goofy. Goofy's got a comically large bag on his car and revealed to Max that he's leaving. Max is like, all right, give me a call. And then he's like, who are you going with? Oh, Donald, like, oh, with my favorite person. Oh, Donald Duck? No, you. And then Max faints. <laughs> We're going to spend some real quality time together. I think I'm going to be sick. Again, a very relate. I get, like, this movie has so many relatable things because when you're a teen, even if your parent's amazing... It's, you're going through that time where you don't want, like you want as much space as possible. It's not to be rude. You just you're growing and you're you're figuring out who you are. And for whatever reason, you're just like, nope, I don't want you around. I do, but not really. Or I really do, but from afar. Um, Max's uh, life jacket is ginormous, and. This is where we're getting to some interesting tension where Goofy is... uh, The primary conflict of the movie is Goofy, I've said, is a bit of an overbearing father. In a very different way than Pete. Because Pete keeps him under his thumb. thumb. Goofy has been treating him as an equal, almost. Uh, Not as a buddy where he's being lazy parent. But it's just like over... um, just uh, really leaving him to his own devices and now he's uh, I'm doing a bad job because Goofy's a Goofy's a good dad but it's just like he's now because he's scared about what this stuff Max is getting into he's he's not listening to him uh it's this isn't a discussion it's it's decided um he's going for the guilt trip like I guess I'll have to go all alone and then you can make the comical, strictly comical argument. The Goofy basically kidnaps his own son because Max is like, I'm not going to go. And he keeps saying no. Goofy says yes. And then he lifts him into the car and like ties the seatbelt on him. He gets no option. 
Um, yeah, he takes Max's choice away. Um, so that's where it's a bit overbearing. Like, he's not going to listen to him. It's There's no buts about this. It's not a discussion. Which, there's room for at certain times. But that shouldn't be... That shouldn't be everything. And you're getting the sense that Max really feels like Goofy does this a lot. And it comes to the great fight scene. Um, not MMA style fight uh, later in the movie. But um, like argument fight where Max is like, I'm grown up now. And Goofy's like, I just want to be a part of it. And that's the central conflict. Max is like really pulled away from his dad and when you've seen goof troop they were like best buds and still father and son but now max is in high school where it's all that where you pull away from your parents um which is again something so friggin relatable about this movie um man i don't really have a bad thing to say about this flick it's so good it's it's like an hour and a half if that and it's it didn't need to be longer, and it didn't need to be shorter. <laughs> so now we're at um, Roxanne's house, because uh, Max has to break the date. He's meeting Roxanne's dad, who's, I think, supposed to be a giant French bulldog. Uh, he's the intimidating dad and super growling. Uh, she's like, he's a friend from school. And then it, her dad's like growling at him still, like the overprotective father. Um, so now he's got to break the date and it's kind of sad and uh, their interactions are really really cute <laughs> the dad's looking out the mailbox um, sorry I, I remember I said um, James Marsden so some of the cast is uh, not James Marsden uh, Jason Marsden was um, uh Max in this, um, Bill Farmer, I think had been voicing Goofy for a while. Um, oh, he's also the current voice of Pluto. Jim Cummings, who has been an, ins like, who's a voice actor, uh, like crazy. Um, those are the main, those are the main voices. Um, Mickey Mouse has a cameo. Uh, Max is now because Roxanne was disappointed she felt like Max was just blowing her off so Max is digging himself in with this lie saying like oh I'm actually going to the, the Powerline concert because the date was he was going to watch the concert at the um, the student body president's house with with Roxanne and Roxanne I want to, not rudely, but just in almost a self-defense, because she was felt blowing off, blown off. She's like, I, I guess I can come go with someone else. And she's not trying to, it's not like that manipulating way, but it's just like, you can you can see she's hurt. Uh, she's kissed his cheek, he's on cloud nine. Um, but his lie was like, Goofy knows power line, we're going to the concert, we'll be backstage. Um, so then she bought it, but now he's like, he's digging himself into a hole. Um, and now we're getting to a great song in a minute called On the Open Road. Um, so good. If you haven't listened, Goofy is driving one-handed while recording with a 90s video camera. Like, actually recording, trying to talk to, to, to Max, and clearly not looking at the road because he's holding the camera and it's from his viewpoint. Um, oh. He's taking his hands off the wheel. And he's trying to recreate something he had with his dad. Uh, Alright, so let's see. Jason Marsden. Let's see what he's done. Um, let's go down to his filmography. Oh, his first voice role was a Goofy movie. Um, then he was Mungo and Tarzan. Uh, Spirited. He was Haku and Spirited Away. Um, Kanai and Brother Bear 2. A uh, student in Monsters University. And then he was also just additional voices in The Secret Life of Pets. Um, but in straight to uh, in direct to video, he was Kovu in The Lion King 2. He was Max in an extremely goofy movie. Um, let's see else. The Jimmy Timmy Power Hour. I have no idea what that is. 
Mickey's Twice Upon a Christmas, he voiced Max. Um, whatever the heck Dragon Lance is, he was a uh, Tasselhoff Burfoot. <laughs> Thomas Wayne in Batman Arkham Knight. In, uh, he did a bunch of things with Garfield. He was also in General Hospital, um, The Munsters Today, Almost an Angel. Oh, cool. He was on Next Gen. Um, oh, he was in Hocus Pocus, Full uh, Full House. Uh, they've just broke the radio because Max with their own like, metal music and Goofy wanted like high hopes. Um, he was in DS9, son! Uh, Will and Grace. Wow, this guy's resume is like a show of shows. Um, oh, and now we've just got Goofy finding rhythm wherever it is. Um, sorry, I'm just back to this. He was on the Sonic the Hedgehog show. Sonic the Hedgehog show. Which, by the way, the new design for Sonic looks great, but that movie looks terrible. <laughs> um, oh, this song on the road again is so good. Um, he was on Superman the Animated Series. Um, Extreme Ghostbusters. Recess, Batman Beyond, The Starship Trooper Show, <laughs> Buzz Lightyear. He's been, this guy's been in everything. It's crazy. Um, seriously, wow. Quite a resume Mr. Jason Marsden does, has. Not uh, to be confused, as I was saying, with James Marsden. Uh, who was, uh... <laughs> so I met James Marsden, who was, um... Cyclops, and then also in Superman, and um, so many other, uh, Superman Returns, and so many other movies. Um, yep. After today, now they're singing a singing angry, uh, um, happy, and angrily at each other. Um, and now you're getting a cast of random characters: some guy playing in a piano in the back of a truck, <laughs> some. Singers burst out of the piano. Some guys threatening to tow Goofy because he almost changed lanes into him. <laughs> Some guys going to prison, and he, Goofy sees him. Uh, Max is now in an inmate costume, so Goofy's getting away. And now we're getting some adult humor. Um, some guys like uh, it, it's not terrible adult humor. Oh, the Mickey and. Donald cameo. Um, no, it's just like a husband and wife singing like just a week of rest and relaxation and the odd romantic episode. <laughs> um, I really like this movie, guys. I really like this song. Also, if you're making it through this, bravo. I hope you're enjoying this. Um, all right. So, yeah. The other thing I was going to say was I was mixing up James Marsden with James... Masterson, uh, who played Spike on um, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. All right, so let's see. Um, everybody's now singing together because as is prone in these movies, so many of these people would be dead. Oh, they lost the pot and pans off of Koofy's comically large bag. Um... You know what? We're going to take a break. This is a good place to take a break. We'll be back shortly. Today in Random History with One Cross Radio, we are looking at a magnificent blip in uh, sports trivia history. Between 1993 and 1995, the Canadian Football League, or the CFL, had expanded into the United States. There were a number of teams already playing, with a planned um, suffer more joining. But the expansion collapsed for, ver collapsed for various reasons in 1996, before the incredibly named Miami Manatees could ever play a game on the field. The logo is simply fantastic. It is a manatee cradling a football, presumably somehow mo maneuvering down a football field. Um, I think it's safe to say that the Miami Manatees are the greatest sports team to never play, and why I have them on a shirt. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed. And back to today's episode. 
Okay, folks, and we're back. Um, I've relocated. I'm now sitting on the floor so I can play with Luna. Um, she was feeling pretty neglected. Um, all right, so what have we missed? Not really much. Um, the big uh, On the Open Road song ended. Uh, now Goofy's taking Max to a, uh, a place that his dad took him, uh, Lester's Possum Park. Uh a child was terrified to go in. It's one of those old anthropomorphic places. And by anthropomorphic, I mean it's all robots as possums uh, singing songs. And the parts are falling apart. Um, it's specifically for children. Uh, and the parents who are super excited for their children. Max is hating every second of it. Um as they introduce the other possums they're falling apart um they're about to do a yodeling song um yep goofy's having the time of his life max hates it uh and he's seeing a little girl who's super duper excited for it and she's singing along with it uh everybody but max is having a fun time uh I guess the whole point of this scene is to further hammer home how, hammer home how upset and angry he is about having to be on this trip. Um, he just, it's a great camera angle of a, oh, I froze. Um, it's a great camera angle where they're singing, everybody's happy, and it just zooms in on Max's increasingly upset looking, uh, looking expression. Um, yep, here we go. We're back. He, he hates his life right now so much. Um, we've all been there, Max. I think we've all had experiences where we've been taken somewhere to something that, uh, we did entirely for other people. Um, <laughs> we hated our, our lives for every single second. Oh, Goofy's got the video camera again. <laughs> That was a clever cover. Uh, Max was just like, my life's a living hell. Except, as he was saying it, uh, a guy in the possum mascot costume walks up like, Hello, little buddy! Um, sorry, I'm... <laughs> the guy hugs Max. Uh, Max smacks the head. Like, spins right around, calls him a doofus. And then, <laughs> he's walking away, and can't see. And... Like, 15 ch kids just pulled him over and, like, yanked him away uh, to his fate. Um, this one girl is terrified to be getting pictures with uh, with the possums. Oh, and now Max sees them hanging upside... Goofy's hanging upside down with the possums and everybody's laughing at it. Some random kid called Goofy a dork. Oh, the possums smiled with uh, Goofy one flew right into Max uh, now it's crawling all over his body and people are making a scene out of it and the poor kid the poor kid doesn't stand a chance uh, his dad thinks he's uh, he thinks he's uh, super happy and into it but Max clearly you know if Goofy was paying any attention hated this um, but he wasn't he's just kind of seeing what he wants to see and the kid just called, came over in front of a large group of people and called him Dork and Dork Jr. Max has uh, angrily thrown down his hat. Everybody's laughing at him. It sucks, man. That's really rough. People are, people are the worst. <laughs> um, oh, and now it's, it's raining. And Max is walking away to hitchhike, so <laughs> you know a fight's coming. It's that teenage angst. Oh, Max is just like, I'm trying to get away from you. And now Goofy's pressing for something and Max doesn't want to have the fight. He's just, he doesn't want to have the conversation. He's just super angry. Um, I mean, like Goofy's well-meaning, but he doesn't understand that he's partially responsible for this. He gave the hat that Max threw down. Max is blowing up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
oh, call me when the trip's over. And the sad music hits. Goofy looks super sad. Um, I'm not sure whose side we're supposed to be on right now. I don't think it's actually choosing sides because, like I've said, they're both in the wrong. But, I mean, it's also supposed to be sad because it's a father and son really, uh, really fighting here and going at it. Max is just... If you would just communicate, buddy. If if you would just if you would just talk. Uh, he's sitting at the end of a rock, all sad, twirling a stick in the water, um, looking mopey as anything. Oh, he's made the water into rock sand somehow. Uh, the teenage mind. Oh, and Goofy steps right in it. There's a metaphor there. All right, I remember what happens here. Uh, Goofy wanted to get some fishing in with him, some fishing practice, and Max is sadly walking away, so Goofy's sadly walking away, and then Goofy is sad and resigns to his tent. Now we got an earthquake, but it's not an earthquake. It's Pete arriving in an insane RV. Like, it saws come out the side, cut down like three trees. Um, this thing's got a pool coming out the side, a lounging area coming out the side, a bowling alley on the roof, a basketball on the other side, uh, and this is all over Goofy's tent, and here comes Pete, and Max is like, well, this is camping. I forgot to mention the satellite dish. Um, I'm not that big of a camper, to be honest. I, I don't dig it. I sleep terribly. Um... I enjoy some of the stuff. Oh, there's a comment about Pete. Uh, he just uh, Max just asked where PJ is. And he's like, oh, I'm sure he's loafing around here somewhere. And PJ is doing all the work in the cab, in the, in the RV. He's like, I don't know what it is, but it's this huge thing that shines floors. And he's singing and dancing to uh, Powerline. And, uh... There's a friggin' pool table in this thing, too. I'm not gonna lie, guys. If I could get on this, I would. I would... I would totally camp in this thing. Without killing trees, of course. Um... I would just do the bowling alley on top and the stuff inside, man. Yeah, I can't sleep when I camp. Um... It's too much noise. And too many people. I hate people. <laughs> Not really. Just whenever you go camping, there's a lot of loud, obnoxious people. And not being able to sleep makes you grumpy. Um, oh, Lunzi, what is it? Oh, oh, Max is dropping dime to PJ about what's going on. Um, and then Goofy and, and Pete are having a heart-to-heart -heart about being fathers. And this is where you really learn about Pete's father approach. Uh, he's, oh no! There we go. Sorry, I dropped my uh, my laptop. Um, oh, so he's saying if they if you keep your kid under your thumb, they'll never end up in the gutter. And then uh, on the bowling alley, Pete uh, Pete bowled. He knocked all but one pin down. And then Goofy's like, "Good try, Pete." He's like, all right, yeah, watch this. And then he calls PJ, and PJ runs right up. And he goes to get a high five from his son, and then he psychs him. And then poor PJ. PJ looks so defeated and sad. Uh, but gets super excited when they invite uh, the kids to stay for dinner. But um, Matt, uh, Goofy is like, hey, we're going to do this. No, we're not going to stay. And the Max like, come on, Dad, whatever. We can stay. And now Goofy's... Uh, Goofy's hardlining, like Pete does, but not as terribly. Although he just said, like, Maximilian, we're going to go do this now. And then you get the classic thumbs up moments. Uh, I miss those. Oh, Luna's brought me a different ball. Um, right. Okay, so this is the fishing scene. Um, you, you see the perfect cast that's been passed down for 13 of uh, Goofy's family's generations. Which is uh, pretty bonkers. That's a long time. I don't know how long a generation counts. 
Guys, I'm not going to lie. This is a little bit of a challenge. <laughs> not having someone to riff off of. I, I like commenting as it goes, but I'm just trying to figure out the tone. I go sidetracked. I, I start getting sidetracked, and then I need to refocus. Um, I've never done this before, so I hope this is interesting. Oh, oh, poor Pete. That would suck. Uh, in the last, the second to last step of the perfect cast, Goofy hooked Pete's steak and then threw it away. Um, poor Pete. Oh, and we've got Bigfoot, who's coming across the steak. Evidently his first taste of meat. Um, he's like, wait, why the heck am I eating this log when this thing smells so good? Um... And Goofy's reeling in the steak, so uh, Bigfoot's chasing after it. And the comedy here is Goofy has caught Bigfoot. And Max is going to get the camera because it's like, hey, I've caught this huge thing. Now, there's no way Goofy could really be pulling in um, Bigfoot. Oh, <laughs> this must weigh three pounds. Um, and Goofy hasn't glued in, clued in what this is. Uh, he's too wrapped up in the moment. He's like, back up, Mr. Foot, you're out of focus. <laughs> he just got hit in the face by his wet, cold steak. And he's freaking out that he saw Bigfoot. He doesn't forget the barbecue. Everything's pulled into the RV, and the RV pulls the heck out of there. Um, Goofy's recording, but the camera gets forgotten. They're breaking into the sunroof of the car because Bigfoot is uh, coming for them. You don't know what he's going to do. I think the idea is he's going to eat him. But now he's just shaking the car. Um, and he sees the random stuff lying about. And he's curious. Oh, here we go. They're like, Bigfoot, we're going to make a lot of money. And Bigfoot breaks the camera. Pulls out all the tape. He's toying with it because this is all new and exciting to him. Oh. They're trying to get out, but they can't. Luna's also got a ball. I've also moved far back from the microphone. I apologize. You can hear it squeaking. She is super excited, I think, because she likes it when I do this. I am going to whack her with a pillow because it makes it feel like she's being played with. Okay, and we're back. Sorry about that, dear listener. Um, we, uh, we're having some technical difficulties. Audacity stopped working, and I realized, like, three minutes later that it stopped working. So to sum up where we are from when I left off, when I was uh, lovingly smacking Luna with a pillow, and now she's uh, gnawing on my hand, because uh, she's like, Papa, I won't play. Um, we, uh, uh, Max, they, they got Bigfoot um, while they were fishing. They recorded it, but uh, Bigfoot destroyed the camera, because of course he did. Um, and then... Bigfoot rummaged through all their things, learned how to do sock puppets. Um, Pete and PJ ran away once Bigfoot showed up. Um, so Max and Goofy are hiding out in the car. Max is starving and his stomach's making noises. So as Bigfoot is rummaging through their belongings, um, he throws out a can of what was clearly Campbell's alphabet soup, just without the logo. Oh, Lunzi! Um, and then... As the can land, uh, landed on the car, Goofy tried to get it out. Bigfoot heard the the window opening and then ran over in a rage. Um, because apparently Goofy and Max can't have nice things. Um, and then Goofy got the can just in time, closed the window. Bigfoot ran face first right into the, the car. And then as he landed, I guess he landed on a box of stuff. They didn't show it well. Um... And a friggin' cassette Walkman lands on Bigfoot. Uh, and it's the Bee Gees staying alive. And then he's slowly, like, getting into it. Does the, the disco dance with his finger. Uh, and then as Goofy uses the car lighter. I don't know if those are still a thing. Um, to heat up the can of soup. Him and Max are having a little bit of a heart-to-heart. Uh, and Bigfoot dances on by doing the disco dance to the Bee Gees staying alive. And that is where we are, uh, dear listener. And we will, uh, we will pick it on up. Moving on up, moving on up to the side, moving on up. 
Uh, he's saying he used to use the can to uh, spell out words. Um, Max is being a kind of cutely snotty kid. Um, and Goofy said, like, it's high dad soup. Um, and Goofy used to, uh, Max used to uh, spell out, like, hi dad. Um, and then Goofy's like, I love you. And then it was the awkward silence. Oh, it's cute. Um, he's, uh, I'm going to pause just because this one's a very nice scene. Um, Goofy then uses his two front teeth to pop open the can of soup. Um, and then Max is asking where he learned it from. And then he's like his granddad. And then Max is like hearing how important it was for Goofy to spend time with his dad. Um, yeah, it it is. It is important to spend time with family. Um, it's not always the most desirable thing. And again, Ma, Jude, Dave, not talking about you guys. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, it's just at times we... Uh, like it, And it's nothing ever against family. It's just the times we'd rather either... It's the same with friends where we'd rather spend time alone um, or we'd rather just rest than see anybody. Um, but it's... It's so important to spend time with family. Um, not to get all sad and sentimental, but heck, it even came up when, when we were when we had Christian and the guys on the last derailed episode, um, and this year, last year especially, it really hit how much I missed my dad. Um, it was the twentieth anniversary of his passing. It hit me in May when the Phantom Menace turned twenty because that was the last flick we saw together. Um, then it hit me in August when he passed. Uh, it hit me again around Christmas. Just because it, it always hurts. It legit always, it always hurts. It never doesn't. I mean, it's just how much does it hurt. At times it's, and I know he's in a better place. I fully believe he's in heaven. Um, but that that doesn't mean I don't miss him. I miss him. Uh, so yeah, these little things like it does, it's important, uh, to spend time with, with loved ones and family. I mean, it, it, it's not an all the time thing, but then when it's going, you guys enjoy it, whatever that looks like. Um, yeah. And then Max fills out the, uh, he's going to sleep. Bigfoot's going to sleep on the top of the car. And right before he heads to, he falls asleep, he hands Goofy um, they've apologized to each other somewhat, um, but then he hands Goofy the case of, uh, or not the case, the cup he's drinking the soup out of, and it spells hi, Dad, and it's, it's really sweet. It's a really cute scene. Um, but we're going to take another break, and when we get back, we will finish a Goofy movie. You're listening to the Theology Geeks Podcast. All right, welcome to the Theology Geeks Podcast. My name is Ben Knight. I am Rob Royce. Because we know what you guys are thinking. You're like, you guys are just doing this for chicks and money. No, no. Remember that from Rocky where he's somebody said, you got to just give me a call. He says, I'll just call you. Honestly, I feel like I'm on like 17 cans of Red Bull. Are you on 17 cans of Red Bull? Podcast been blowing up. Do you guys remember voicemail? I mean, why? There's, I mean, there's really no li- reason for you guys to listen to us, but it's awesome that you are. Nobody uses numbers anymore every day. I think you guys are going places, so I'm just saying, if you give me $10,000, I can make it happen. Really? That's all? You can't have a servant's heart? There's something about church life, things that happen in a church, certain practices of why the congregation stands at this spot and sits. Why is that important? One of the greatest things in the world to me are Little Smokies and barbecue sauce. If somebody, if the coach of Notre Dame went out and prayed on the 50-yard line and said, hey, you can't do that. So, well, actually, going back into the bylaws from, like, 1760, I can. Hey, guys, this is Ben Knight, one half of the dynamic duo of myself and Rob Royce for the Theology Geeks podcast. We're just two guys having a conversation about life from the Christian perspective and taking on topics that we're sometimes too afraid to tackle beyond the comfort of our living rooms or Hello Kitty bed sheets. One of us is a pastor, a youth pastor, and an amateur theologian, and the other uses his mouth to make noises and form words. Oh yeah, our Twitter handle is at TheologiesPod, and you can find us on Facebook and Instagram at TheologiesPodcast. We love exchanging witty banter and strange gifts, so please feel free to follow us on the social media. 
You can find us on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, and everywhere else podcasts can be consumed. Okay, and we're back. Um, Luna was really demanding play, and I suddenly got a hanker in for cheese, um, and I made a, uh, a chamomile tea because, uh, for whatever reason, I need to calm down. Uh, Anxiety is still a little bit high today, and chamomile tea helps with that. I am drinking out of my wonderful Redeemed Otaku mug, um, which, uh, which is just a wonderful mug. Great podcast and great logo. It, it works so well on a coffee mug. Um, I know there's a number of ministries, so I'm like, I want your shirt. Um, Becky and I were actually talking about that once, um, about how, for, for whatever reason, I, it's, it's, I dig shirts. Um, I've told Jill, um, my amazing wife, numerous times. I'm like, hey, if you don't have an idea of what to get me, you can get me, like, these shirts. Um, she's like, you've got enough shirts. And do I really? Um, I'm always down for more shirts. As I've said before, the friggin' Miami Manatees that was going to be a CFL expansion team had, um, they had a logo drafted up. And it's a friggin' manatee cradling a football with a helmet. Um, I want that on a shirt. It exists, so I will get it at some point. Um, just all the graphic tees. All right, so we're in a scene where, uh, after the heartwarming moment, the snoring of Goofy and Bigfoot has woken Matt up, uh, Max up, or kept him from falling asleep. He's got crazy bloodshot eyes. Uh, so he decides to try to write Roxanne a letter confessing his lie. She... But he, he can't get into it because he's like, no, nah, I'm an idiot and this is all stupid. Um, so instead, he he hits the dashboard in frustration and uh, open the the little thing. I don't know what it's called. A little drawer that's on the, uh, the passenger side opens and then the map rolls out. Uh, seeing the map, the route that Goofy's made that's all these... Uh, zigs and zags and twists and turns um, to the, the the lake destiny that they're going to for this fishing trip. Um, Max sees it and then out rolls a pencil. And there's heightening music and it's just like, oh, oh, I've got the chance to change the map and change it to Los Angeles where the Powerline concert is. And Los Angeles is this little tiny spot on this map. You know, not the huge city that it is or anything like that um and then yeah max wrestles with it for about 30 seconds not even and he's erasing goofy's route partially um so he can then add add a line to los angeles because there's one turnoff point where it goes to lake destiny and then it goes to los angeles and as max is drawing it it's creating noise goofy's kind of waking up um, there was some light involved from the little drawer thing. Goofy, half asleep, just asked Max, Max, how many cups of sugar does it take to get to the moon? And he falls right back asleep. Uh, Max got away with it, but he he clearly feels guilty. And then he rips up the letter that he was writing Roxanne. Oh, his window's open! But I guess because, um... Um... Bigfoot to sleep, he doesn't care. And a part of the letter that he wrote got fixated as the sad music played for a second. I lied. Um, man, this movie's so good. It really, really focuses on a lot of the good things and heavy message. Um, not heavy messages, but like things that everybody can identify with. It's done so well. Um, Goofy got a giant stack of pancakes. Um, and the lady, the diner lady brought him, ah, over easy eggs and bacon and a smiley face. And Goofy just, um, destroyed, like, five pancakes on one fork in one bite. It's, uh, not gonna lie, it's pretty impressive. I feel like Mike the Dumpster would be, uh, the Dumpster. Uh, Mike would be very impressed. Uh, Goofy's like, hey, we need to, uh, we need to talk about this as he picks up the map. Oh, there's an Elvis impersonator. Max is, of course, really nervous that, um, uh, that he's seen the, 
the changes to the uh, to the map. Oh, but instead, Goofy is uh, trying to show Max some uh, some trust and responsibility. He's given him the map, and he's now the navigator of the trip. And he's saying, I trust you uh, with everything. I'm not going to look into it anymore, and you can pick all the trips. And this is where it becomes a really nice father and son trip. Um, you know, it's a good second act before the, uh, the, the uh, big fight that's coming. Goofy is on a sea doo I guess it's called. Um, oh yeah, it is a sea doo and it went all over the beach and everything. The tire pops, so they're getting the emergency tire out. Max is forcing Goofy onto some roller coasters, and Goofy's going very shades of green and definitely threw up. And Max tries to give him tacos and stuff, and Goofy runs back to the bathroom. They're doing all the stuff Max wants to do, and he can. It's it's cute because he can see. Oh, I've got to be thoughtful. Uh, they go to the monster trucks and everything is way too loud for Goofy. So now he's choosing like a yarn place. Um, Goofy gets excited for it. It's really cute. And now they're somewhere where there's a mime and Goofy's miming with the mime. The mime holds out rope and then Goofy cuts it and suddenly a piano drops and that guy's dead. And they're walking away whistling. <laughs> what the heck happened there? This is a great montage um, of them suddenly getting along. They're becoming they're becoming boys and friends and a great father and son duo. They were in a cave. Goofy took a picture that pissed off all the bats, and they all flew after them. At a baseball game, he's fallen into the dugout, but they got the ball. Yay! Aw, oh, they're changing the tire together. That's how you know it's a montage and the random rock music with no lyrics. They're stopping at a place called the Neptune Inn. Um, <laughs> it's an a mermaid theme inn. The dresser, the dresser is coral. Um. They're excited about the lamp that is clearly aerial, but the th the lights are in the uh, the seashells. So this sneaks in, this one sneaks in stuff for adults like a little subtly. Um, it's well done. Oh hi, Lunzi, where's the ball? Don't pause the movie. <laughs> Luna just came up with a big bone. Uh, you'll probably hear her gnawing on it. She is so cute. Um. And Pete sees, uh, Pete's shown up, uh, because he saw their car, and he's getting, uh, Goofy to hook up, getting Goofy to allow him to hook up the, uh, the extension cord for the RV to charge it through Goofy's room. He's like, it's a small little cord, you'll hardly even notice it, it's this, it's a tube, it's three tubes! Uh, it's leaking water all over the place. Also, the beds are water beds with fish. Um, man, the pizza in this looks so good. The cheese is so stringy. Um, and now they're all, uh, they're bonding. Max is confessing to, to Pete, but not in a, like, confession way. He's just saying, like, how they changed the map. Goofy's checking out the, uh, the hot tub. Man, a jacuzzi would be nice right about now. Goofy's got the boxer kinds, and, uh... Well, Pete is wearing a swimsuit that is, uh... Like tidy whities but purple. <laughs> so Pete's a little large. And as he hops into the, uh... As he hops into the hot tub, a lot of water comes out, and then he's just like... People always put too much water into these things. I like these covers. Because you get the humor, but it's not mean-spirited. Um, Pete overheard that Max changed the map. And he's telling Goofy. And he's he's being the bearer of bad news that Max changed the map. He's duping Goofy. Goofy really doesn't want to hear this. Um. Oh, that's sad. 
Goofy looks so sad and defeated. He doesn't believe him because he wants to trust his son. Mac, uh, Pete's not wrong here. He's encouraging Goofy to check the map. Oh. Ooh. Again, the power, the, not power, but fathering difference dynamic. Goofy's walking away, and Pete's like, well, he's, he's just a bad kid, and Goofy's like, no, he's not. He might not be all the things you think a son should be, but my son loves me. And then Pete's like, look, my son respects me. There's some really good heavy themes here, guys. Without a friggin' parent dying in front of a child after a stampede making everybody cry, um... Goofy hits the the steering wheel in frustration because he, he doesn't want to check the map, but the map rolls out so you know he's seen it. Um, the kids have made a disgusting mess in the room. Goofy's just walking in, not responding to anything, just turns on the light and lies down in the bed. Doesn't say a word. And... PJ leaves, saying, I think I better leave. Goofy's still awake, so he overhears them whispering about power line. And now we're back into them being on the road, and you th you know Max knows. Ah, that chamomile tea is so good, especially with... I put a heaping... Not a heaping. Heaping is the wrong word. I put a big spoon of honey in. Um, It's just tense in the car. And they're approaching the the junction on the 66. Um, Goofy's looking at the map. Sadly, looking to Max, saying, here you go. Just follow my route. Oh, man, he's like, not intentionally laying it thick, but it's Los Angeles or Idaho. And Goofy's like, this is it, left or right. And Max panics and yells left. And it's it's a really interesting scene, because Goofy could easily... He knows the way. But he still wants Max to make the choice. It's it, it, He wants to trust his kid to choose the thing he wants to do. And now Goofy looks ticked. And Max is trying to do the stuff that that cheered Goofy that Goofy tried to do to cheer him up earlier in the movie, um, like a card game, and Goofy gets angrier and angrier, um, and Walt Disney gets name dropped. So Goofy gets out of the car, struggles getting out of the car. <laughs> oh, Luna's going to get to the ball. Hi, Loonzy. Yes, we can play while Papa watches and records. Um. Oh, and we're getting other fights that show that it helps when communi communication is very important. Uh, Max is Max is trying to explain to he's trying to explain to Goofy what happened, and then Goofy's like, "Why well, bother? Because I'm too stupid to understand. Too stupid to understand, probably right." And then Max just walks away, being like, "Forget it." He kicks the tire, leans against the back of the car. Now. Every once in a while, I'll lean on Mike's car. Mike's like, bad things sometimes happen. I'm like, Mike, come on. That doesn't happen. Uh, but Goofy forgot to put the parking brake on. And they're at the top of a hill. So it's launched the car. And now they're fighting as they run down the run down the hill. Um, it's going down a mountain. They're somehow on a skateboard. It is a Goofy cartoon after all. Uh, they they can't get back in. Uh, they're trying to get in, and they're fighting as they do this. <laughs> uh, Goofy's blaming Max for locking the door, and he's like, you distracted me. And then Goofy's like, or Max is like, see, you ruined everything. And now they're bouncing across some pillars. Uh, being like you ruined the vacation and then I never wanted to go on this vacation um, 
now they're in some water, so they're screwed. They're they're in trouble. Um, they're big time fighting. But what's really nice out of this, um, yeah, they're they're saving each other's lives as they're throwing these barbs at each other about how. Um, he lied. Goof, uh, Max lied to, lied to Goofy, and then Max is like, "I'm not your little boy. I'm growing up. Like you need to treat me like, like treat me respectfully." And Goofy's dropping the bomb. Like, I know you're growing up. I know you've got your own life. I just want to be a part of it. And you're my son. No matter how big you'll get, you'll always be my son. And I mean, like. That's a really sweet line. Again, Ma, I am in no way, shape, or form talking about you. You were wonderful and awesome. Sometimes parents don't do a good job. And this movie shows perfectly that, yeah, Goofy's got his flaws, but dang, is he a good dad. Dang, is he a good dad. Um, Now they're floating on this car, just going downstream. We'll find out in a couple minutes why they're floating downstream. Uh, In a great scene. This whole movie's so great. Sorry, trying to talk while watching, while figuring out what to say, while playing fetch with a puppy that's blocking every conceivable way to throw the ball is interesting. Oh, Max just tried to say something and it got quiet, so he's going to sing it. And we get to a great song, one of the great songs, many great songs of this movie, um, where it's uh, uh, Nobody Else But You. Um, basically how they understand each other and how they're always supportive of each other. Um, and again, there's some great jokes in here. It's like, uh, later Max sings, uh, sorry, late by later. I mean like in 20 seconds, um, he's, uh, friggin' what's the line? Oh yeah. Though he seems intoxicated, he's just highly animated. Such a good line. Such a good song. Why is this movie so underrated? Why couldn't I think of the word underrated at the beginning of this episode? Um, ah, this movie's so good. It deserves such a bigger audience. Um, it's legit one of my favorite Disney movies. So, the the first song, the first verse was very apologetic and pointing out flaws, but uh, also loving. And now we're getting to the point where they're smiling while singing at each other. So it's just like, okay, they're really making peace here. Um, a fish just bit Matt Max's toe and he's super excited. And a giant fish is on Goofy's foot. Um, oh, they're buddies again. And then there's two chipmunks that aren't Chippendale, the rescue rangers. Although I think they're animated the same as they were. Ch -ch -ch chip and Dale. Friggin' Disney Plus. You're making me revisit my childhood in so many ways. Um, I can't remember what this is called, but they're at, um, is it a cyclone? It's when it's basically like, um, we, you can almost think of a tornado, but in the water where it's just the water swirling, 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 going down. Oh, Loons is following my hand cause I'm holding the ball while I do it. Um, and now goof. And now Max is going straight to the heart of the matter, telling him everything about Roxanne and and uh, him lying and all that. Oh, Goofy's being such a supportive dad. And he's like, oh, you're in love. You're growing up. You're growing up so fast. Ah, right for the heartstrings, but with so much humor. I'm going to sip some more tea, guys. And now Goofy's just like full on supporting him. Being like, hey, we're going to get you on stage with Powerline. I'll figure it out. Oh, a great line here of, uh, how come you always think I'm going to lead you into some sort of calamity? And the river they're drifting on is hitting a waterfall. And, yep, they're in imminent danger. They're about to die. Um, there's some really good animation here. Um, some really good tense music. The score is really good in this movie, movie too. Oh, Goofy got hit with the fishing rod. Um, <laughs> he's trying to save his son who's on the front of a car 
as the water picks up speed. Uh, he's about to hit a log. Goofy tried to fish for Max, and Luna just dropped the ball on the laptop. Um, yep, Goofy has hooked the front of the car. Um, gone face first into a rock. Man, these guys are dead. If Oh, Max has fallen, but he's got tangled up in something that's almost like a parachute. Um, and now Goofy's, Max is holding the end of the rod and Goofy's holding on to the bottom. Uh, they're smiling because they think they're out of it. Oh, but the bottom handle just broke off and Goofy's fallen to his death. And Luna somehow got on the couch. Go get the ball, baby. And Goofy's falling to his death. Oh, and Max has done the perfect catch as a cast. To try to catch him. Oh, the line's gone. Uh, the line's gone, meaning he's he's hooked something. Oh, and it's Goofy. This this is ridiculous, but the right kind of ridiculous. I mean, we're watching a movie about a character named Goofy. This works. Fight me. <laughs> this movie's amazing. And Goofy's got tears in his eyes because it's the perfect cast. And, you know, because his life was just saved. Um, such a nice moment. All right, here's a good spot to take one last final break. We'll be right back. Hey guys, just as we're on this quick break, I wanted to uh, put this out to you. 541 Eatery and Exchange is a tremendous uh, community resource. It's right around the corner from my house. In fact, one of our earliest episodes was an interview with Jen from 541. And in December, they uh, they announced they're facing some financial hardships. There was a tremendous outpouring of support uh, back in December, but now... Um, uh, we're in January and that's hitting again. If you can at all, please consider um, heading over to 541.ca uh, slash exchange. Uh, that's their website. Uh, they have a link to their donation box. Please consider uh, donating to them. They do so much for our community, including a pay it forward system with buttons where some of the most needy people um, or in need people can get a free meal a day just by accessing these buttons. Um, please, if you can, consider hitting up their website. Um, you can also find them on CanadaHelps.org um, if you look up 541 or uh, Compass Point Bible Church. But if you can, please consider. They have in no way, shape, or form asked me to do this, but uh, they are a great place who need as much help as, as they can get. Hope you can check it out. Uh, hope you can donate if you can. God bless, my friends. Back to the episode. Okay, and we're back. Guys, I'm not going to lie. I, I know I said it earlier. This is difficult, man. Um, I'm going to... I might do this again, but I'm... De or not, I might. I'm definitely going to do this again, but I'd definitely love to do this with somebody. Because um, then you got somebody to feed off of. All right, so now we're at the uh, the big finale. Uh, we are at the the Powerline concert. Um, <laughs> Max snuck in in a drum case. Um, Goofy snuck in in a guitar case. Uh, and whoever you, you if you've ever had friends in bands or had uh, musical instruments, you know you even those padded cases you you carry carefully. This guy, the guy just tossed him in. Like, that dude would be fired. Powerline has emerged from a glass ball that was struck by, um, not lasers, but electricity? Um, his backup dancers are going. And now we're seeing the kids watching the, uh, the concert. Um, with no sign of Max. Max and Goofy have got separated. And Max is getting starstruck. Oh, and some big, huge security guard is chasing after him. Goofy accidentally walks in on some lady changing. Gets knocked into this, uh, clearly this prop, um, that's going to, that raises up onto the stage. It's like a giant shaker globe, but, uh, Goofy's in it. Um, Bobby points out that Goofy's not there. And then Roxanne's looking sad. Her friends tries to console her, and her friends like, 
he'll be there. Um, you kind of hope this is only the first song and not the whole concert. Oh, so Goofy's been revealed to the world. Powerline's like, who the heck are you? Max is up on some scaffolding, telling Goofy to do the uh, perfect cast. Powerline seems like a good dude, incredibly thin-waisted. Um, his waist is thinner than his legs, and so he's po <laughs> copying the perfect cast. And now we're at the point where Max inadvertently kills a guy. Because <laughs> he swung up, the scaffolding fell because the security guy showed up. Um, <laughs> and then it broke, it swung, the guy held on to Max, lost momentum, and then flew into his screen. <laughs> Oh, and Max is now on the uh, stage dancing, and Roxanne looks super happy. Everybody's happy because he did it. Pete can't believe it. Uh, PJ's watching it. Um, oh, the lady Max uh, Goofy walked in on changing is now on stage singing. Everybody's singing and dancing. Uh, Bobby is spraying the girls with the, the spray paint she's whiz. Oh. Him and uh, Stacy, the student council president, are now holding hands and smiling. It's ju it's just that happy climax of the movie. Um, yep. And now, uh, now Goof uh, Goofy is driving with Max to Roxanne's house. I have no idea how they got their car back. The bumpers falling off. The thing has no do no doors, no windows, <laughs> dents everywhere. Um, and Goofy's trying to encourage Max to do the right thing, which is the right thing to do. And then Max is like, but she'll never want to talk to me again. And he's like, well, then if she doesn't, maybe she's not the right one for you. Which, ah, uh, such a supportive and good father, Goofy. <laughs> Dang it. Um, and Max is like dreading doing this. He knows it's the thing he's got to do, but he doesn't want to. Um, he doesn't want to lie either. He's rang the doorbell. Uh, the angry, scary father shown up, but this time in a towel and a shower cap. Slams the door on Max. Oh, Roxanne. You were great on TV. Oh, they're so cute together, guys. Um. Oh, he just dropped the bomb that he lied. And she's like, what are you talking about? Like, how can you not know him? We just saw him dancing and now Max is confessing like he made up the the story and that he lied and now she's like why would you make up and then it's I wanted you to like me and then it's I already liked you oh it's cute from the very first time she heard him laugh his hey yuck oh she's asking him out and then he's like Oh, definitely. Oh, wait, I can't. But he's doing something with his dad. And he's being honest. And he's changed the date to tomorrow. She said deal. He stuck a kiss! Oh, he did the yuck and the full-on... <laughs> um, and he covered his mouth in embarrassment, but she... <laughs> she smiled. Goofy put the bumper back on and then just... Smiled at the car. It just exploded. <laughs> His smoldering shoes were just there. And he's landed through her porch. And just goofily waves and is introduced to Roxanne. Alright, friends. That was a goofy movie. Um, it's, it's one I uh, clearly really, really enjoy. Um... But it's, as I watch it, I'm like, man, this is just so freaking good. And it's so underrated, and I'm really glad that it's on um, it's on Disney+, Plus because now I get to be lazy, not have to dig out the DVD. Um, yeah, the, as I called it, I think two or three times, doing this kind of episode was, uh, was interesting. It, it's something I enjoy doing, but um, if you're not aware, I don't do much prep. <laughs> When I do these, um, the most prep I've ever done for this was when I did the deep dive into uh, into Power Rangers. Um, 
and and the uh, when it was a straight up review of Shin Godzilla. Um, I do a little bit of because uh, there were so many points that I had to cover that I needed notes. Um, when I do the chat withs, um, nothing's really prepped. I've just got the questions written. But it's uh, one of the things I love about this this medium and podcasting is you get the you get to the heart of the conversation. You get the fun conversation. Um, and sometimes to me, you you lose that a little bit when everything's over prepped. Um, the inspiration of doing One Cross Radio, aside from like coming across other Christians that were doing this, was back when uh, the website was two different websites, and I was doing the interviews um, in a text-based format. So much of it was getting missed. Caleb, uh, my brother-in-law, he was my first interview where we recorded a bit of the video and that was fun, but it was, it was still different and we were still missing stuff. And then I was going to interview my other brother-in-law, Alex, who uh, was on the podcast a couple of years ago. Um, he was like, you do lose something, uh, when you don't do the actual, when it's text and not a conversation ever since then, I'm like, you're absolutely right. Um, and I found when I've prepped too much you you i you lose some of the free flowing thought but <laughs> it was interesting with this one for me because i did no prep and then just trying to more so than any other time i've done a podcast i'm feeling those long those longer pauses and it's kind of like man i got to think of something to say something about what's going on or like let a tangent flow but it it's like moderate when you're not you're not when you're moderating but when you're hosting a podcast and you've got multiple people and you're trying to keep things focused and things moving that's that's different with multiple people but it's like having to do that with yourself <laughs> it was uh it was an interesting experience but uh but i really enjoyed it and dear listener i really hope you enjoyed it as well um i love film and i i love some of the conversations that you can ha- even have about movies while while they're going on. So this will become a new series on One Cross Radio. We will do more Let's Watch. Um, but I think most of the time they will feature, um, feature a guest. Um, there might be a couple other solos, but nine times I, uh, I'm going to prefer to have a guest. Just, uh, just to have someone to riff off of and all that. Um, all that being said, if you made it through... I hope you enjoyed. Um, <laughs> and if, if let me know if you watched the movie as you were doing this. Um, legit, some of the favorite, some of my favorite stuff, favorite little random stories that made me laugh, were listening to movies with directors' commentaries, um, and then getting you're getting people's off the cuff tangents or remarks about what's going on, and it, it's crazy interesting. Um, one of the funniest ones I've ever heard was. Uh, Kevin Smith was doing a commentary for Jersey Girl, and then out of nowhere, there's just a long, uh, like a, a 10 second silence break, and he's like, man, Darth Maul had such a wicked entrance in episode one, and it was wonderful. Um, so since then, I've loved director commentaries, because you can, you can learn a lot about what goes behind the scenes and all that, but then you can also just get fun tidbits and, and really cool stuff. Um, so, the the let's watch gets your gets you a chance to do something like that because you didn't make the thing, um, but you get to share your opinion and uh, and how much you enjoy it. So this will be a, I've rambled on and I know I've said it, but this will be a new episode, um, not a new episode, a new series on One Cross Radio, and um, yeah, most of the time it'll be guests. Um, but please let me know in the comments uh, what did you think? What did you think of the Goofy movie? What did you think of today's episode? I really, really hope you enjoyed it. Um, and uh, what do you think we should watch along next? Let me know. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for your love and support. And uh, God bless, my friends. Take care. Peace.